In this video, we're going to go through how to solve quadratic equations by completing the square. So you can see on the screen here, I've shared a, a lot of steps with you. Uh, this process has a lot of steps. Um, I will go through every question from today's assignment, um, and I will also be available all day if you have any questions on this. Um, but don't worry, I'll help you get through this. So let's do an example together. The first example is x squared minus 12x equals negative 32. So to complete the square, you want the equation in a, in a little bit of different format than what we used to what we usually use. Um, usually we want it equal to zero. But with completing the square, you want it so that the constant, the plain old number, is all by itself. So step one on this uh, guide here says, Use inverse operations to rearrange the equation so it's in this format. This is exactly the format we want. We want the x squared term and the x term to be on the left, and we want the constant to be on the right. So step one is done for us. Step two, if a is not equal to one, divide each term by a so that it becomes one. Remember, a is the term in front of the x squared. So in this problem, a is already 1, so we can already move on to the next step. Number 3. Use this expression to calculate the number that, if added to the left side, would make that left side a perfect square trinomial. So we're going to use this formula. Um, b is the number in front of x. So we're going to take that negative 12 and we're going to put it right there where it says b. So we're going to do half of negative 12. And then after we do that, we're going to square it. Half of negative 12 is negative 6. And negative 6 squared is positive 36. Remember, anything negative is going to be positive after you square it because it's going to be a negative times a negative. So now it says add this value to both sides. So my equation becomes x squared minus 12x plus 36 equals negative 32 plus 36. Now let's simplify a little bit here. This can't be simplified at all, but negative 32 plus 36, that's 4, positive 4. So let's simplify it to 4. <clears throat> now step 4, the whole reason we did this the term on the left should be a perfect square trinomial. I can factor that, right? I can factor this term, and it's not just a, any old factoring. It's, it's a perfect square trinomial, so both of these factors are going to be the same. I need two numbers that multiply to 36 that add up to negative 12. That would be negative 6 and negative 6. The whole reason we went through all these steps here was so that we could get um, two factors that are exactly the same. We talked earlier this week and last week about perfect square trinomials. That is a perfect square trinomial. That's one of the trinomials we were memorizing. Um, the whole point of doing all this was so we could force our equation to have that perfect square trinomial. So now the next step says to rewrite this as a single binomial squared. It says both resulting binomials should be the same. Rewrite them as a single binomial in parentheses squared. So we've done that. And the whole reason we've done that is um, if you have one term that's being squared, you can use square root to solve it. So I'm going to square root that and square root that. The square root of something being squared just cancels out the squared. And we're just left with what's inside the parentheses, x minus 6. And the square root of 4 is positive or negative 2, plus or minus 2. And then finally, we're going to take this right here and set up two equations to solve. Because there's a plus or a minus there, there's actually two equations. Maybe x minus 6 is equal to positive 2, or maybe x minus 6 is equal to negative 2. And then the last step here is to solve each of those equations. To solve this one, I would add 6 and get x equals 8. And to solve this one, I would add 6 and get x equals 4. So all of this was to get our roots, our solutions, 
x equals 8 and x equals 4. So this problem, x squared minus 12x minus negative 32, which is question number 1, is equal, x is equal to 8 and x is equal to 4. All right, let's do another example. In this example, I'm going to go a little quicker, but I'm still going to go through all the steps here. x squared plus 80 equals 18x. So the first step says let's rearrange this formula so that it's in the correct format. To do that, I need to move the 80 over here, and I need to move the 18x over there. So I'm using inverse operations to move stuff around. This equation is really x squared minus 18x equals negative 80. All right, the next step says if a is not 1, divide everything by 1. Well, a is 1, so we can move on to the next step. Half b in parentheses squared. We need to cut negative 18 in half and then square it. So half times negative 18 squared, half of negative 18 is not negative 9, and 9 squared, negative 9 squared, is going to be 81. So I'm going to add 81 to both sides here. So x squared plus, sorry, minus 18x plus 81 equals negative 80 plus 81. I don't like that I scribbled there, so I'm going to write it again. x squared minus 18x, which is what we had, plus 81 equals negative 80 plus 81 is just going to simplify to be 1. All right, the whole point we did all of those steps is to factor this as x minus 9, x minus 9. And we can even take that a step further. It's x minus 9 in parentheses squared, right? It's the same thing multiplied by itself which is equal to 1, and then let's square root both sides, x minus 9 squared, then square rooted would just be x minus 9, and the square root of 1 is plus or minus 1. Let's solve both of those equations. Maybe it's equal to plus 1, maybe it's equal to negative 1, so this one's going to be x equals 10, and this one's going to be x equals 8. All right, so that was number two, x squared plus 80 equals 18x. The answers are x equals 10 and x equals 8. Next example, x squared minus 2x minus 48 equals 0. Now this one's in standard form. You know, this is the format we would be using if we were using factoring or quadratic formula or even graphing, but um, these questions say to use completing the square, so we're going to do that process. We're going to move the 48 over there, so it's x squared minus 2x equals 48. Uh, we need to cut the b in half and then square it. Half of negative 2 is negative 1, and then negative 1 squared would be positive 1. So I'm going to add that to both sides. 48 plus 1 is going to be... 49. The whole point of doing all these steps is to be able to factor this as x minus 1, x minus 1. I needed two numbers that multiplied to positive 1 that added up to negative 2. So that was negative 1 and negative 1. And hey, look, they're the same. So I'm going to write it as a binomial squared. And then I'm going to square root both sides and get x minus 1 equals plus or minus 7. x minus 1 plus or minus 7, maybe this is equal to positive 7, maybe this is equal to negative 7. So when we solve this equation, we're going to get x equals 8. And when we solve this equation, we're going to get x equals negative 6. So there we go, the answer to number 3 is x equals 8 and x equals negative 6. Number four, x squared minus 6x equals 7. This one's already in the correct format, right? The constant is already alone, so let's jump right in. And a is 1, so let's jump right into this step. Half b squared. We need to half the negative 6 there, which is negative 3. And then we need to square it, which would be positive 9. So we're going to add 9 to both sides. 
that would be 16. I'm going to need two numbers that multiply to 9 that add up to negative 6. That's going to be x minus 3 and x minus 3, which can be rewritten as x minus 3 squared. And then the square root of this is going to be x minus 3. And the square root of 16 is positive or negative 4. Let's solve both of these equations here. x plus 3 equals 4. Or x, or sorry, x minus 3 equals 4, or x minus 3 equals negative 4. And let's solve that. That would be plus 3, that'd be 7. And this one would be negative 1. So the roots, the solutions for this one is x equals 7 and x equals negative 1. And last question here. Number 5, we have x squared plus 12 equals 8x. So first step, let's move the 12 to the right and the 8x to the left. That would be x squared minus 8x equals negative 12. <clears throat> let's cut that negative 8 in half, which would be negative 4, and then square it. That'd be 16. Let's add 16 to both sides. This right here, oh, let's simplify the right side first. That would be four. This right here can be factored to x minus four, x minus four, which is equal to four. That can be simplified even more by making it a binomial squared. That's still equal to four. Let's square root that side and get x minus four. Let's square root that side and get plus or minus two. Let's write both possibilities here. This one would solve to be x equals 6. And this one would solve to be x equals 2. All right, so again, if you have any questions uh, besides the five questions here, or if you get stuck on one of them, shoot me an email or uh, wait till next time you see me, and I'd be glad to help. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.